Hey, everybody. Uh, it's uh, TV Coast to Coast, a semi-regular video chat about TV featuring critics stationed all over the country. Uh, we've got Christy there in Portland. Hi, Christy. Hi. And we have Vicky in New Jersey. Hi. <laughs> and uh, I'm Dave in New Orleans. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, Better Call Saul, and we're going to talk about The Slap, and then we're going to talk about Bosch. And we're going to start with Vicky talking about Better Call Saul. It's the spinoff to Breaking Bad, and I kind of like it. What did you think, Vicky? I kind of loved it. Um, yeah. If Vince Gilligan had announced he was going to do a Revenge of the Nerds remake as a three-camera sit three sitcom about Gail Botticher's undergraduate days at the University of New Mexico while supplementing his income at Starbucks, I'd be like, cool. If he wanted to do a decorating show on HGTV hosted by Betsy Brandt and characters Marie Schrader called, of course... The color purple, I'd be on board. <laughs> I'd probably watch half an hour of Tio Salamanca ringing his bell. The point is, I trust Vince Gilligan implicitly. And one of the things I admired so much about Breaking Bad is that there was rarely a false step that you get with so many other shows that you love. But uh, um, I, I really sense that sure footedness um, right out of the gate with Better Call Saul. Um, given the broad character of Saul Goodman in Breaking Bad and his frequent function as comic relief, I think some people might have expected sort of a sitcom -y product here. Um, it's clear Gilligan and his creative partner, Peter Gould, are going for something deeper. It doesn't look like it'll be as dark as Breaking Bad, but we're on a similar journey about a man fighting his better instincts to find his authentic self, even if... His authentic self is a craven, obnoxious, but extremely effective wheeler dealer in the criminal underworld. Um, I thought Bob Odenkirk was excellent. I think he's going to surprise a lot of people as this sort of 2002 era proto Saul Goodman. His name in the show is Jimmy McGill. That's his real name. He's a struggling attorney operating just barely on the right side of the law. Um, and he, uh, his co-star is Michael McKean, who's also a revelation. He's Goodman's older brother, a high-minded lawyer who serves as Jimmy's um, moral compass, even though he's so mentally ill he can't leave his house and his forsaken electricity, and wears an aluminum foil blanket. Um, I watched the first three episodes in which um, Jimmy gives in to his inner con man and finds himself entangled with a dangerous element, and I'm sure we were all very pleased to see um, a familiar face from Breaking Bad. Um, I was completely hooked. I think that this journey from Jimmy McGill to Saul Goodman is probably shorter. It may not be as epic as Walter White to Heisenberg, but it may be actually a lot more fun. Um, I, I loved it. I know um, you guys probably liked it, too. I am less convinced about the slap. Christy was <laughs> not really enjoying that first episode. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to be enjoying it or not. What did you think? Well, um, you know, it's interesting. I mean, I, 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 didn't, I liked Better Call Saul. I'm not quite as sold on it yet as you are. I'm still kind of waiting to see where it goes. I really, you know, totally, obviously admire what Gilligan um, did with Breaking Bad and Peter Gould. Now, Peter Gould is more the showrunner on this, mm -hmm. although obviously Gilligan's going to have a voice. So I'm curious to see how this show kind of develops on its own. You know, it's hard to say. I mean, watching the first couple episodes, I thought, if I was seeing this cold, what would I think of this show? If I'd never seen Breaking Bad. And I wasn't convinced I'd be immediately hooked, but I have total confidence in the talents involved. I love Bob Odenkirk. I think he's great. He's got dimensions he can really show us. So... With that said, let's move on to the slap, which, again, I seem to be maybe, I guess, in the minority liking. Um, I found it very interesting. It's based on a novel. It was originally done as a miniseries in Australia. This is the American version. It's an unexpected thing to find on NBC. And I think they're having a little trouble um, getting across the message to people what it is. Um, they're not doing a very good job of promoting it. Um, it's a miniseries. And it starts with this precipitating event. It's a, it's a, the 40th birthday party of Hector, who's played by Peter Sarsgaard, who's uh, supposedly trying to be a, a good man, sp speaking of Goodman. Um, <laughs> but he's, he's, he's showing some, some cracks in his, in his armor. Um, and a lot of stuff kind of starts bubbling over at this birthday party, and it ends with this climactic thing where one of the kids who's there, who's been kind of misbehaving, is wielding a bat, and uh, the character played by Zachary uh, Quinto, Quinto, ooh, dear, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, um, who is the cousin of Sarsgaard char character, um, slaps the kid. 
Um, and that sort of sets things rolling. Um, you know, we, we understand more about sort of why the, the guy slapped the kid, um, the reaction that everybody else has to the kid getting slapped. Um, and the second season sort of goes more into the story of Harry. That's the character that Zachary Quinto plays. Um, and I found it fascinating. I mean, I just found my sympathy shifting literally from scene to scene. There were moments where I was siding with this character, but then I was siding with that character. And I found it very thought-provoking because then I had to ask myself, well, why am I siding with this character now, whereas a minute ago I was siding with that character? And I, I find the way that the story unfolds is very interesting. It's written by John Robert Bates, a playwright who's also done a lot of television. Um, and the cast is outstanding. I've mentioned Sarsgaard and J Zachary Quinto. It's also got Uma Thurman, Tandy Newton, Melissa George, who's very interesting, playing the mother of the boy who gets slapped. Thomas Sadowski, who's also really good. It's nice to see him freed from the newsroom. There's our obligatory newsroom dig. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You know, you can't go too long with that one. And anyway, um, I just, I am very interested in how the slap finds so much drama out of something that is basically about how people react and, and kind of the way we live now, as opposed to, you know, people hauling out a gun or chasing after a zombie. Not, not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, but I just, I admire the, the sort of the difficulty level. And I think they do a good job um, just making it fascinating from the get-go. That was, that was my opinion. I thought Vicky said something really interesting when she was throwing tossing to you was that I think she said that she wasn't sure if she was supposed to enjoy it or not and I had the exact same reaction I that long meal that gathering that goes is the heart of the whole episode after a while I started to worry that it, we were going to have to relive that whole thing through every character's <laughs> point of view like Rashomon <clears throat> it just seemed to be interminable to me and really tough to watch but Christy, I think you're right. I think there's some real smart stuff going on on that show, and and I'll probably dig in and try to follow it through. I I, I was uh, I it sort of won me over after a while. Hmm. Yeah, I found that birthday party sequence extremely suspenseful, and I thought it was a good job of filmmaking, just the the editing and the way it the way it uh, kind of played out. I mean, I was on the edge of my seat and I was watching a birthday party, but yeah. <laughs> that's me. That's cool. <laughs> Uh, well, um, we've had some cable, we've had some broadcasts, and I'm going to go and finish up with uh, talk a little bit about a new streaming show. It's Bosch, uh, which drops all 10 episodes on Friday on Amazon uh, for streaming. And um, it's based on the Michael Connolly books. It stars t the awesomely named Titus Welliver uh, about an L.A. detective. It, Los Angeles looks beautiful in the show, and it, it tells... It's stories in a very deliberate kind of cool way. The soundtrack's sort of jazzy. There's sort of a noir sensibility to it and sort of not. Um, what I kind of liked about it was what it says about Amazon right now in that they've made a real splash with Transparent, which is right on the cutting edge of television storytelling now um, for a streaming service. This, Bosch, is a little bit more like a procedural you would see on a network. I think this show, minus some language, could air on any of the networks. And um, uh, it's got some challenging things about it. It's full of familiar TV faces and good writing. And it, it's definitely a step forward and I, I think a broader kind of show than anything else Amazon has put out there. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of it. I think I've seen the first two. And um, uh, I think it's 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 going to be a lot of fun to watch in sort of an old school, almost Rockford kind of way. It's, I, I don't know, it's, it's, it struck me as a, something different for Amazon altogether. By any chance, have either of you had a chance to take a look? I haven't. I haven't seen it, but I'm a huge fan of the novels. Um, yeah. And oh, by the way, awesomely named Hieronymus Bosch. <laughs> That's right. his actual name. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking <laughs> forward to seeing it. Um, is it more procedurally or is there, you know, bigger arc? I mean, like when you say it's like a network, automatically I'm like, ugh. No, I think, I, I don't think it's, I think there'll be elements of both. And, and I think, um, you know, he's in some trouble right away. Uh, uh, Bosch is, and that's, I think, going to be the through line for the season, but I, I sort of need to watch it all to find out. I think um, it, it's, it's slicker and hipper than like an old school TV procedural is, and um, 
And so, you know, I don't, I don't want to paint it with that brush necessarily, but it's definitely not as slick or hip as transparent or even, you know, like Alpha House, you know, which had, uh, has a point of view that's r unique and a little weird, where this, I think, almost any kind of viewer would be comfortable watching it. And I'm really curious to know how fans of the books uh, react to it. I know there's a lot of buzz in that community um, for this show, so it'll be interesting to see how it plays. Um, well, thank you both. Uh, thank you for pulling me through this again. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you all for watching. And uh, we'll see you back here on TV Coast to Coast next week. Bye. Bye-bye.